I'm Paige or Novice Cosplay and in today's video I'm going to be making Sophie Hatter's dress from Howl's Moving Castle. This movie is such a comfort movie for me and I actually cosplayed Sophie all the way back in 2017 with a bot costume so I'm really excited to go back and make a handmade one all on my own. So let's just get started. I found these super cool fabrics on AliExpress. The blue is matte on one side, but has these gorgeous green iridescent fibers weaved in that makes it look so magical when it catches the light, just like how Howl imbued his magic into Sophie's dress to make it look beautiful. You're wearing that hat? After all the magic I used to make your dress pretty? I'm a bit unsure about it since I don't normally do my own original design takes, so you'll just have to let me know how it turns out. And then for her apron, I have this lovely embroidered chiffon. It's sheer, so you can still see the shine from the blue dress underneath. Is the chiffon apron functional? Absolutely not. But it will look pretty, so who cares? Links to all of these will be in the description. For the pattern, I use the Sophie Hatter pattern from Fashion Pattern Studio on Etsy. And I chose this one because it has an invisible zipper on the side seam instead of on the back, which I wanted to avoid. I did make a couple of adjustments to the pattern. My waist was just outside of the sizing, so I increased that a bit. And I'm also on the tall side, so I added two inches to the skirt. Just remember, if you need to make large length adjustments, make them just below the hip like this and not on the bottom edge. I quickly made a mock-up to test the adjustments, and then I got started. The pattern is super detailed and walks you through every step, so I'll just share some highlights. I searched all of the edges since I'm not lining this dress. For the gathers on the top and the skirt, I used the dental floss method. All you do is get some dental floss, set your machine to a wide zigzag stitch, and then carefully stitch over the floss, making sure not to puncture it with your needle. Then you just pull on the floss and you get perfect gathers. This makes it much easier to get evenly distributed gathers, and it smells minty. Just be sure to remove it once you've sewed all the pieces in place. It's a bit hard to tell what's going on with the cuff in the instruction booklet, so I just quickly wanted to mention that when you sew your cuffs together on the side seams, make sure you unfold the iron seam allowance before sewing like this. That way, as you turn it right sides out again, you can sandwich your raw sleeve edge inside effortlessly. This was my first time making fabric covered buttons, but it was actually really fun and easy. I definitely recommend the kit I used. You just cut out circles of your fabric and then push the two metal pieces together. And voila, so pretty. Buttonholes are so nerve wracking, but I just did a lot of tests and practices on scrap fabric, so they went okay. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how clean and crisp my hand finished cuffs turn out? I'm really proud of these, it was my first time making cuffs. But to roast myself, my invisible zipper side seam is a few millimeters off. I redid the zipper like three times, and you know what, once you're no longer having fun with something, I think it's totally okay to accept some imperfections and move on. Plus, the apron tie covers it anyways. For the decorative lace bit on the collar, I just folded some of my apron fabric in half and put that in between so it would match. And that's the dress. Now let's move on to the apron. For the apron, I repurposed the skirt pattern that was included with the pattern I bought. I made it a bit shorter and less wide. For the waistband, I attached a strip of tulle to use as invisible interfacing. Normal interfacing would ruin the sheerness of the fabric, which is why I used tulle instead. I 
I tested the apron out on my dress form and well, I didn't really like it. As you can see, the pattern is just way too loud and distracting. So after sleeping on it over a couple of days, I decided to try adding an overlay. I undid the entire apron and grabbed a yard of plain white chiffon. I think it'll mute the pattern a bit and make it a lot more subtle. So I redid the apron, adding the chiffon overlay. Tested it out, and this time I think I like it. It definitely tones down the pattern, but I'm still not 100% convinced by it. So let me know what you think and if I should get a completely new fabric or keep this one. But with that, it's done! Sophie really only has those two pieces of her costume. I also threw together a quick little bum pad, which is essentially just a padded pillow to wear under the skirt to help with the dress silhouette. But with that, it's done! So what do you think? I am so happy with it. I think it came out really nice. Um, I'm still not really sure if this looks better with her brown or silver hair because it's kind of in between her two dress colors. So let me know what you think. I absolutely love how it came out. I think the pattern was awesome to work with. Even if you're a beginner, I think you'll have a really easy time working with this pattern and Fashion Pattern Studio was super responsive on Etsy. I asked them one question and they got back to me almost immediately, so definitely recommend. And I also recommend if you make a Sophie cosplay, you should also put your own unique spin on things because using this cool color shifty fabric was so fun and looks so pretty in the sunlight, uh, so definitely try to put like some lace or trim on it or something cool. But that's pretty much the end of the build, and if you'd like to see more cosplay videos or tutorials, definitely subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!